Welcome to the EEG Reading Rounds. In the next few minutes, I will walk you through some of the important features on this EEG. On this introductory page, you see a bipolar longitudinal montage. All the odd numbers, as you may recall, represent electrical activity from the left hemisphere. All the even numbers represent electrical activity from the right hemisphere. In this EEG, we do not see a clear posterior dominant alpha rhythm. A striking finding is some asymmetry that we see between the left hemisphere. So these are the electrodes recording from the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. You may notice that there is more slowing in this region as compared to the left hemisphere. Another striking finding on the EEG is these sharp waves. These are located at the left frontal central as well as the right frontal central head region. If I draw a line, you see the sharp waves occur more or less at the same time at all those electrodes. We'll move on. The sharp waves are again seen in the right frontal central region and you see the field extending into the right temporal region. When we compare FP2 to F8 and there is an upward deflection, it basically has two meanings. Either FP2 is more negative than F8 or F8 is relatively more positive than FP2. But when we look at the whole field here and here, the conclusion is it is actually the FP2 which is most negative. You see slowing in both the left hemisphere. So between these two green lines, there's a one second time interval. And if I count the number of waves, so one, two, so this is sort of a delta frequency. And you see some superimposed fast frequency which is in the beta range. Sharp waves are seen almost on every other page. Although the EEG shows slowing in both hemisphere, the amplitude on the right hemisphere, so here and in this region, is higher than when compared to the right hemisphere. Apart from the delta activity, you also see theta frequencies. So these frequencies here, these are the theta frequencies. And the superimposed beta activity. Beta frequency is a band that ranges from 13 hertz and onwards. So frequencies which are either 13 hertz or higher are classified as beta frequencies. Just to remind you, frequencies that are less than 4 waves per second, so frequencies of less than 4 hertz are called delta frequencies, and you see this very slow wave here, so this is in the delta range. In a normal adult EEG, you expect to see an occipital dominant alpha rhythm, which is not seen on this EEG. On this page specifically, you see a lot of fast frequencies. So these are beta frequencies between these two green lines. If you count all these waves, you will find that these exceed 13 waves per second. Another nice example of a sharp wave in the F with maximal amplitude at FP2. These are eye blink artifacts. You see that there is a higher amplitude on the right as compared to the left side. Again, you see some faster frequencies. Although these are present on both hemispheres, you see higher amplitude in the right hemisphere. You may want to question the technologist if this patient had any skull defect given on the clinical history. Patients with skull defect may demonstrate higher frequencies and amplitude in that region, 
which is also termed as breach rhythm. Another example of sharp waves in the frontal and temporal head region. Let's use a different montage to look at those sharp waves. So now we are looking at these sharp waves in an average reference montage and when you're looking at an average reference montage the area which has the highest amplitude is the most negative area so considering that rule FP2 has the highest negativity and therefore the highest amplitude. When you're using an average reference montage you can expect to see contamination on the EEG. Basically what that means is since you're averaging the potentials from a number of electrodes any negativity that is put into the average appears as a relative positivity on the other channels and vice versa. Any negative sharp wave may appear as a positive sharp wave on the non-active electrodes. So you see sharp waves in FP2 and F4. Higher amplitudes are at FP2. You do see a small sharp wave at FP1. there are quite few sharp waves in the right front to polar head region. Average reference montages are good to show and demonstrate sharp wave activity. When you're looking for slow activity it is best that you use a bipolar montage so that you do not contaminate the whole EEG from the average reference. sharp waves. These are what I call juicy spikes. You have a very high amplitude, you have an after coming slow wave, you have a nice feel so you have FP2, F4 and F8 involvement. You also note a significant slowing in the frontopolar head region which is seen both on the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The sharp waves are seen again on this page you're seeing a generalized slow activity so between those two green lines you see this delta activity here so there is a burst of delta activity seen in both hemispheres I will now change this to a bipolar montage what you see here is the slowing which we saw on the average reference montage there is some artifact at P4 which got averaged and was showing up on the average reference montage. So this is pretty much the end of the recording. Thank you, that's it for today.